Hi everyone, this is Mens here playing the new Tier 6 Royal Navy battleship, the War Spite, here on World of Warships. This ship was just added. It is a premium ship. However, it is the first uh, British ship that you're able to play in World of Warships. Now, for a battleship, it's very short. Um, it's not exactly long, which is very untypical of or atypical of battleships usually they are very long however it is still fairly easy to hit but that's not too much of a concern because your rudder shift time as you see here i do have the modification is very good for a battleship so you are able to weave in and out very easily compared to other battleships which is very nice now well, it kind of sucks that the other team has a lot more tier 7s than us, but <laughs> it's going to be kind of funny to see how this goes. Now, firepower wise, it's main guns, good, but they're very inaccurate, they turn kind of slow, and they don't have a very long range. Just looking at the maximum range, as you see, just over 16 kilometers. Now... Armor-wise, it has decent armor. Uh, most of the Citadel areas are below the waterline, and there is a lot of space armor that helps against torpedoes that runs almost the entire length of the ship, which helps out a lot. Now, basically the main concerns about this ship. Main guns, nothing spectacular. Just something to kind of worry about because as a battleship you're really meant to do a ton of damage and this thing might be a little difficult to do that at times and as you see your guns do lag behind your actual uh, rudder when you start shifting and moving so you're not going to be able to keep up very easily now accuracy wise Comparing it against the Fuso, you do have a uh, disadvantage as far as overall accuracy. Even though your overall range is shorter, your guns are not more accurate. Now, anti-aircraft capabilities, they're pretty good for a Tier 6 battleship. You'll be able to take out a few planes if they're coming towards you. You're not going to be able to absolutely murder them like some destroyers, but you'll not be completely defenseless. Very unlikely I hit them, but it's worth a shot. But this ship, it'll probably be buffed a little bit, I think, before release. Because right now, it just kind of feels like an oversized cruiser, which I don't know the background on this ship, but it just might not be a true battleship, but who the hell knows. But right now it does feel like it needs a little bit to kind of make it worthwhile of buying since it is a premium ship. Whether that's buffing the main guns or something else, it does need a little bit as far as reload or accuracy or range. Okay, so I'm on fire. Did I say that you can shoot me? Hello, little Omaha. My biggest annoyance with it is that your guns do not keep up with you turning. And I do have the modification for the secondaries to make them more accurate and longer range. It's at close ranges it is very difficult for your main guns to keep up with cruisers and destroyer.
Okay, he got annihilated. Here comes a Nagato, unfortunately for me. And I missed all shots. But as I kind of said earlier, one thing this ship does not lack is capability to turn. Now, would it be nice if your guns could keep up? Definitely, but eh, you can't have everything, it seems like. Okay, let's see. Eh, never mind. I thought he was done turning as much as he was, so they were going to miss. Come on, guns. You can do it. Yeah, I led him a little too much on that last shot. Backing up for some reason, that Nagato. Hmm, thought I might have hit him, but no luck there. Now, I've been playing closer in here, mainly because I don't have the range to actually fight in the open water. As far as fighting against other battleships. Which is why I'm playing a little like a cruiser almost, because this thing's pretty maneuverable. And I've got some friends coming this way. And also, playing a little closer does help with negating the issues of your accuracy a little bit as well. a pesky Cleveland. I'm going to start shifting to shoot something a little bit closer. Uh, never mind. Cleveland's almost dead. Very nice if I can take him out. Solved, 
Ooh, Nelly. Uh, sorry, dude. And that's where the rudder shift comes in. You can definitely get yourself out of some trouble on this thing. Looks like I just missed him with most of my shots. I think I can make it. Yep. Trying to get him within my secondary range. I do know that he has torpedoes, though. Really? Gotta knock out my turret. Here we go, that was a nice hit there. the dust. We destroyed an enemy cruiser. He should have saw that coming. He would have been better off running away to get out of my secondaries. That's one thing. This ship has pretty decent secondary fire. Especially if you have that modification to make it more accurate and longer range. Um, which most battleships have a lot of secondaries compared to other ships. But this one in particular, it's a nice little bonus considering you have difficulties with your main guns at times. I would hope that they're able to deal with that one cruiser back there on their own. Uh, turned a little bit too much. You can do it. Here we go. I had a feeling he was waning to drop a torpedo on me from there. As you see, your overall top speed, not very quick, but being able to turn very good is, or very well, is definitely a plus and it makes you feel a lot more maneuverable than you actually are in terms of raw speed. And at long range, even though you're not able to outrange other battleships, and even some cruisers, if you're facing higher tiers, you might have difficulty uh, remaining safe against enemy cru cruisers. They have about the same range as you. Um, being able to turn very well definitely makes up for lack of speed that you have and the range. You're able to really dodge things very well. Like a destroyer, but not because you're definitely a lot bigger than a destroyer. But if you get what I'm saying, you're able to change your heading a lot easier in this than other battleships. And it'll make it very difficult for enemies to actually hit you. Alright, so that destroyer is all the way back at our base. We have... Okay, there's another aircraft carrier roughly in J8, judging by where his planes came from. 
Let's see if we can take these out without too much. He's just dropping them. Yeah, one's going to hit me. Unless I'm able to really... There we go. Dodge it again. Helps that he's just firing them head on, but it would be very difficult to actually turn and dodge like that in another battleship. Just start getting my guns pointing the other direction. Only because I'm going to be heading left eventually to stay in the cap circle. No point in me chasing after him since very unlikely that I'll actually be able to catch up to him in time before time runs out. Now, is this shirt ship? <laughs> not sh I was about to say shirt. Is this ship worth buying? Uh, even though it's a beta, if you're getting pre-order gold, eh, it's definitely worth a look at. If you like battleships, it might not be for you. But if you're somebody who enjoys battleships and cruisers, it's worth a look at because it is a little bit of both. You're not essentially a battleship as far as world of warships gameplay goes because battleships at least the japanese ones most of them most of them have pretty good armor some of them are fast but typically very long reload time on your guns decent accuracy and turret traverse but not spectacular this is very low for a tier 6 battleship compared to the fuzo and other japanese ones at the mid tiers but Essentially, battleships are long-range um, ships and World of Warships. They do a ton of damage per shot. They can take a lot of damage from your turn. This ship, it's not exactly filling that role. It does have decent range at Tier 6, but not excellent. And it's just atypical for battleships right now because you only have the Japanese line. And is it a decent ship? Yes, especially for a premium, it's all right. But right now, it's not going to reward playing it like a battleship at all times. You have to play it kind of like a very heavy cruiser. So overall, not a great match, but decent. Hit 16 targets, which the accuracy on this thing, I said it was bad. It's pretty bad for your main guns. That's why I was trying to play closer to use my secondaries. Decent amount of credits. Shot down 7 planes. Destroyed two ships, hits two hits at a citadel. Uh, team wise experience, second place behind our tier seven carrier to ranger. Did 45,632 damage with AP. My secondaries did 777 damage. And then let's just head back to the port real quick. So, as far as stats go, it's going to get out here. Um, armor wise, 1 millimeter to 330 millimeters. I believe the Citadel stat, I think it might be wrong because as far as the Citadel area, like, yes, I know this includes it, the conning tower here. However, usually, Citadel area, middle of the ship where it's mostly armored, usually has a bit of. Um, armor to it. This ship doesn't exactly exactly have it, which is just a little odd. Um, that just might be something that was left out. There's a little bit of the backstory here, but um, it's just pop back to the port. As you know, premium ship can't change anything, but as far as armor goes, as you see, survivability, combat capability, your hit points, 53,800. Just comparing it to the Japanese battleship, the Fuzo, here, you have just a little bit less um, hit points. Armor-wise, 
depending on if that citadel figure is wrong, you either have comparably the same amount of armor or a ton less. But I believe that's just something that's uh, listed there wrong. Because 15 millimeters on the entire citadel would be pretty bad. But now something I pointed out is it does have spaced armor here for torpedoes and it does negate a little bit of damage not everything but just a little bit and just comparing that to the fuso as you see here fuso doesn't exactly have that running down the entire side of the battleship so that's just something a little different there artillery so your main battery you have four turrets with two 381 millimeter guns so you do two rounds per minute very slow 180 degree turn time your dispersion at your maximum range of 16.3 kilometers is 226 meters pretty bad now damage per shot decent there now you pop over to the fuso here fuso has six turrets with two 356 millimeter guns so just comparing that back to this the worst bite does have a larger caliber gun but the fuso has more of them and as far as the maximum range a lot higher 21.8 kilometers on the fuso it's turrets traverse a lot quicker at 50 seconds and damage wise fuso a little bit lower at 4100 for he and just over 1100 for ap and the worst bite just over 6,000 for HE and 12, or basically 12,600 for AP. So higher damage per shot, but a lot worse accuracy. As you see here, the maximum dispersion on the Fuso is listed higher at 280 meters. However, that's at 21.8 kilometers. So it, it generally it works out to where the worst bite does have slightly worse accuracy than the Fuso at the worst bite's maximum range. So overall, the Fuso is um, does have a little bit better accuracy. Now secondaries, Fuso here, four turrets with two 127 millimeter guns and 14 152 millimeter guns. Worst bite, decent, as four turrets with two 100 or yeah 102 millimeters and eight 152 millimeters. So you have a little bit less secondaries than the fuso however it can still really wreck um cruisers pretty easily and then your maximum range five kilometers without any modifications and four kilometers on the fuso so the worst bite does have a longer maximum range now aa guns you see a 33 listed value here so you have two kilometers 2.5 kilometers and five kilometers for your AA gun. Fuso is a little bit better and a little bit more range on everything. So the worst bite, even though I said it has a lot of or good AA, it's just it's decent for tier six. You're not gonna light up the sky, but you will be able to take out torpedo bombers and fighters. Not dive bombers great, but you'll be able to take them out decently, but not anything amazing like a cruiser would say like a cleveland or a pensacola or something you're not going to be able to compare to that but especially with your rudder shift time you'll be able to dodge torpedoes pretty easily and dive bombers maneuverability 29 compared to 26 on the fuso fuso maximum speed 25 knots turning radius 910 910 meters rudder shift time 17.9 seconds now, worst bite, slightly slower at 24 knots, turning circle radius 550 meters, so that's almost half of the Fuso and rudder shift time 20 seconds. So, while it does take a little bit longer than the Fuso, as you see, it does, it, it, it just feels completely different. <laughs> You saw in the match, it turns a lot quicker than a Fuso, and you're going to be able to turn very easily in this thing, especially with uh, steering gear modification too. Now concealment, it's a battleship, you're not going to have very good concealment, but you do have uh, better value than the 
Fuso. You're going to be detected at 18.9 18 kilometer in the Fuso, 12.2 kilometer from the air, and then the worst bite, a lot lower values there. Now, as far as the modifications slash upgrades that I use, main battery, just to kind of protect them a little bit, because usually they get hit a lot more than your secondary or AA, just because they're a lot larger. Secondary battery modification, just to add more to the firing range and accuracy. Damage control system, just because the other two, I find this a little bit better. I'd rather not flood or catch on fire. And then your steering to help with the rudder shift time, so you're able to dodge torpedoes very easily. I'm just going to pop into one more battle here now that I've gone over everything. And as far as whether it's a good ship for you to buy or even try to test out, because once the game does get released, everything's wiped. You get all your gold back that you spent. So if you didn't like it, you're not stuck with it forever. So it's still a decent time to test things, but it is a high price to sink a lot of gold in if you are only buying say 1200 gold and that's all or something like that all right so this match going up against two fuzos and quite a few destroyers and cruisers same map though i always get this map for some odd reason i'm gonna play it somewhat similarly I don't want to get out into the open water in the one and three line because if any of those battleships are there I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble because they're gonna outrange me and just kind of run away and I won't be able to hit them I do have to see where our other battleship goes so while I'm not necessarily gonna go out here very far I'm gonna be at least trying to support here for now because you can't exactly just leave it open so it looks like the the gato on our team is gonna be heading to the other side Okay, so just fucking people saying poi. Sorry, it's just annoying. I hate when people say that. <laughs> but um let's see. Just waiting to see where their battleships are. Okay. Because basically if there's battleships over here, I'm going to be turning hard right and coming back to the middle. If there isn't any battleships, then I'll kind of stick with it and head down this side. Just all depends on what the enemy's team's doing. Okay, so he's not exactly paying attention. There's a little cruiser there. Yeah, so there is a Fuso here. Guessing the second one's gonna be on this side too. So even though he's over here, at least he's within my range.
Okay, so he stopped dead in his tracks. Wish I would have known that. <laughs> would be able to hit him pretty easily. Yeah, he's heading forward now. start turning right. I'm going to wrap back left. Just, eh, never mind, he's not hitting me. I was going to try to throw him off a little bit and keep my... Ooh, he just got one shot at. There's a destroyer down there with him. Ouch. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to go against both Fuzos and an additional destroyer and cruiser. So I'm gonna start turning back. He's about to fire, so I'm gonna try to get as close to this island as I can. Should have started turning a little sooner. That's my fault there. About this Pensacola now and the other crews are a little bit more than the battleships. But our guys kept going south. If you know you're against two battleships and we weren't really very well matched against them. It's better to turn back and run away than just keep going into them, in my opinion. That hurt a little bit. So my fire is almost out. I might just save this. Ah, fuck. I hit an invisible wall on some of them. Yay, torpedo! At least I live. For now. Yeah, there's no way I was getting out of all of them. Basically, dodge one, and or dodge one volley and get hit by another. So good job by them, but it looks like our team's ahead enough that we should be fine.
but and then I probably should have just turned uh, right into that cruiser instead of trying to trying to turn away and head away from him. I would have been better off. I would have messed up uh, the aircraft carriers, torpedo bombers a little bit better. Now, had I gone against those two Fuzos down there, nice job by them to destroy one of them. However, I most likely would have been taken out pretty quickly. They would have just focused on me and nailed me and basically fucked me over. A lot harder for them to hit the destroyer and um, cruiser that was down here, especially the Sims. Sims very hard. Now that guy's just shooting his own carrier. That's pretty. That's pretty funny. So good job by the Sims right here. Kind of using them as a shield. Oh, guy doesn't even notice. He's just nailing them. <laughs> Not to help him, but it's pretty freaking hilarious. This guy's going to get a little too close, though, and finally be... Ah, no, he's not going to get hit by his secondaries. He's still doing a pretty good job. Got to worry about the people behind you, though. I'd actually start... Yeah, you better start going forward. But that was actually a little hilarious. I uh, know you fired him. Wait. Yeah, can't always rely on that indicator. That Fuzo wasn't going at full speed. But still, a good job on the Sims part. So they just have to finish these guys up now. It's don't know why these guys are all the way back there not really doing anything. hope these people win because we were ahead by quite a bit and it's getting a little closer now. I don't know why I guess this cruiser's not playing. But they're all the way across the map and while there's still eight minutes left it's still a very long time. Um either let that carrier screw us over or something worse than doing a tie. I always hate when people kind of forget about the time limit and then it ends up being a tie. But as far as the worst bite goes, it definitely has its limitations as far as accuracy and its maximum firing range and also overall top speed. However, has a pretty decent amount of armor. Uh, hopefully that Citadel 15mm thing is incorrect and it's just listed wrong. And it has a pretty, like I was saying, decent amount of armor. It's kind of stubby and short. So kind of hard for people to hit you while you're turning uh, in between your shots. Now, it is a little bit of a concern that your guns cannot keep up with your turning, even at long ranges. Uh, and that's with the steering modification. It will probably keep up without it. However, you're kind of gimping yourself not taking advantage of that advantage that you have over other battleships. But 
what the worst fight is good at, at least what I've seen, is you can't really play it like a battleship. I played it a little more battleshipy on this match than I did on the last one. I was in open water in the beginning and kind of got screwed. When you play it kind of in with the cruisers and destroyers, I find it does a little bit better because the closer you get, the more you make up for the lack of accuracy and you really can tear people apart just bullying other ships and much like some premiums in World of Tanks where you say you're a heavy tank uh, it's what was I gonna say I forget the <laughs> freaking tank now uh, KV something but one of the premiums even though you're a heavy tank you're not exactly a typical heavy tank. You bully mediums and stuff. So let's just say KV-5. And this is very much like that. Where you can't exactly fight toe-to-toe -to -toe against enemy battleships as well. As you would. It, again, say you're in a Fuso. You can go up against a Fuso. Even at a Gato pretty easily. In a Congo. This, you'll struggle going up against an enemy battleship. And it's a little bit of a concern. But it's not necessarily a bad ship. Uh, would be nice if the guns were a little bit more accurate or had a little bit more range, but I'm sure they're going to work on balancing it. I only hit 11 targets, one hit to the Citadel, shot down five planes. Credit-wise, a little bit low for a premium ship. I noticed that the uh, pre-order, like Sims and the two other, the... I don't know, what the hell, I forget their name. Uh, basically, the other pre-order ships I noticed get a really high amount of credits. These, uh, the regular premium ship, uh, the Warspite, Bite, gets a lot less than, say, the whatever. And <laughs> the Ubari <laughs> and the Sims. Still not going to try to pronounce that ship because I'll fail miserably. But while this ship isn't the best ship in the world, it is certainly unique in that... Compared to the Japanese battleships right now, who knows how it will compare to the U.S. battleships. It's very different, and I keep saying it cruiser-esque, and it fits somewhere in the middle, which isn't always a good thing, but it's not always a bad thing either. It just really depends on the map, your team, and who you're facing off against. If you come toe-to-toe -to -toe against other Japanese battleships, or other battleships, and right now there's just Japanese, and they outrange you and out damage you with their main guns, you're pretty much screwed. But if you can avoid going toe to toe in a situation like that, then you'll do pretty well in this ship. So, anyway, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website, mensgaming.com. Thanks for watching.